All right. Uh, the last thing we want to do in chapter 9 before leaving it is uh, talk about the tables that are available in almost every statics textbook that I've seen. Actually, in none of, all of the statics textbooks I've seen, they have tables which organize some information. Uh, here they are on your back and front, well, the back covers of the textbook. I think they're only on the back. I think there's other information in the front covers. So what does it have on one of the back covers? Geometric properties of line and area elements. So if you wanted to know the centroidal location, here's the easy one to understand of a quarter circle area. They put a little C for where the centroid is. And then you can tell by this has a lowercase r for the radius. And then they tell you what is the location of that centroid, both in the x and in the y. So it's 4r divided by 3 pi. Oh, we could derive that. But after you've done a few of these calculus problems, there you go. You don't need to rederive it. How about for a circular sectional area? How about for, uh, this is for lines over here. So circular arc segment, quarter, semicircular arc, things like that. Now, we're going to get into today, chapter 10, and that is the area moment of inertia. So they actually show you what is the area moment of inertia for an area here um, about the x-axis as well as y. I didn't put the whole page on, but I think we're going to come back and take a look at this one, or we can use this one later, as well as this one. So simple rectangle and simple triangles. If we had our, our right triangle like this, and somebody said it has a base, uh, let's call it base B, and height H. Uh, the area formula is real easy, is it not? One half base times height. Do you see that area formula? Remind, you're reminded of the area formula right here. All right. How about where is the centroid of this? Well, it looks like it would be around right there. It's one-third out from the base toward the, where it drops off, and one-third up. So it, it, this centroidal location, if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, it's one-third B, that's the centroidal location, x of C, I would call it, as well as y sub C is one-third H. Make sense? All right. And then here's a formula we haven't caught into chapter 10. We're going to get there today uh, for the area moment of inertia. And then for a rectangle, you have, they even put the coordinate system, starts right there, X and Y. In this coordinate system, the, the centroid is at the origin. All right. Now you can also get it for solids. That's on the other cover. So if you wanted to know the center of gravity or the location of the centroid, assuming it's a homogeneous solid, then you could find it here. They're showing you for a sphere. Here, what are they showing you here? This is a hemisphere, half a sphere, right? Hemisphere. And notice that they put the X and the Y and the Z uh, coordinates for the hemisphere goes where the origin is, is at the center of the gravity or the centroid of that volume. And the base down here is lower. So, so the centroid is this distance into the hemisphere. 